Preparing horses for feature races is all about getting them to peak fitness at the right time. One horse who seems to be getting that just right is Eyes Wide Open. Previous Grade 1 winning son of Dynasty Eyes Wide Open has come back to his best this winter season. Although a credible second in his last run, the Cup Trial, the pace didn't suit him. Glenn, how's he taken that run? Eyes Wide Open has come out of uh, the Cup Trial exceptionally well. He's uh, absolutely bouncing and starting to strip down into the horse that we want him. He'll be ready and firing for the, the Vodacom Durban July on the, on the 6th. I uh, must tell you that uh, uh, we did some pace work with him yesterday and uh, we're super excited. Every week he's just getting bigger and stronger and better in my opinion. The scale says that he's starting to trim up which is what we want. You know, he's a really big horse that's why we opted to give him uh, another run in between his win um, in the 1900 and, and the July. So yeah, we, we're really pleased and I can tell you that uh, the public will see him move uh, on the July gallops. It is part of his prep so it's been put in there and um, You'll see him move and stretch, he'll be galloping by himself, so uh, you'll be able to see him, you know, his well-being, and we're really excited about him. I think we've got to be excited, I've got to tell the punters out there, that he beat Do It Again in the, in the Group 1 derby as a three-year-old when he was at his best, and that was at level weights. You know, Do It Again is now going to give him seven kilos, and seven kilos over 2-2 two, two equates to many, many lengths, and uh, I can really tell you that we're back to our best again. We're on top of him, and uh, we think that he's, uh, he's a huge, huge runner. I think when the punters realise, you know, when the weights come out, uh, which they came out yesterday, and they start studying, you know, he'll be well fancied um, and he'll be shortening in the betting. You know, Warm is a magnificent horse, so he's only run against, you know, his own age group. It's the first time he's taking on the older horses. And it's a tough task, um, as good as he is, it's still going to be a tough task, uh, giving three kilos away to the older horses that are in form, like uh, Eyes Wide Open. So, yeah, we're very excited and um, touch wood, you know, and we'll say our prayers. So far, the, uh, his pet's been flawless, and um, hopefully he will go on to go out and win us uh, the 2019 Vodacom July. As in 2018, snaith racing is set to be well represented in the Vodacom Durban July. Double Mint was not suited to the way the cup trial was run, with no pace on early in the race. Double Mint racing about seven lengths off them, they're not going hard. Look, he needs a few a bit of racing. He's a colt. Look, all kudos to those guys. I mean, the difference is like when we went to the front and Osazana, we went we went at a good pace. I mean, Osazana, she went a bit clear. Two lanes to the good. When you saw Savannah's pride, my filly, when she went to the front, she went flat out. She was four lanes clear. The only thing, some guys go to the front and pull the, the handbrake. So sadly, in that race, they did. But you know, kudos to them. It's it's the other jockeys' then initiative to go round and then pick up the pace. So uh, when there's a slow pace, I, I blame the jockeys in front and I, I blame the jockeys behind because there's no reason why they can't uh, uh, make up the pace. So especially now we're in the middle of the season. I understand right in the beginning of the season we had a few incidences. All fierce is using up a lot of energies. Moved right around them the red cap. But we, it was the first race of the season, so it's very hard for guys to chase after a horse that's going to go flat out and 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 sometimes they stop sometimes they don't but uh, in that race we're right in the middle of the season and we would have liked a stronger pace but it, it, it is what it is so come Vodacom Durban July those horses won't be allowed to do that I can tell you right now plus the 2-2 two is a better option for them double mint he won the winter derby uh, he's a horse that needs every bit of 2,400. He's a twice over. You'll see the best of him come Vodacom Durban July. I think with 53 uh, kilos on his back, he's still a huge, huge runner. But as I said, we need a good pace. And I think in the Vodacom Durban July, we're going to get that. Uh, it's going to be fast this year, I think. And uh, it's going to be like watching those, those English, those American racing that we after 200 meters, some horses are starting to, to scrub. So uh, I think that's what it's going to be about. You're going to be, you got to be good this year because these horses just run at a higher pace, so uh, it's going to be very impressive. Made to Conquer finished right behind Double Mint in the Cup trial. Justin, will he also enjoy the 400 metres extra like Double Mint come the Vodacom Durban July? Yes, look, I was very impressed with his race. I wasn't that keen to run him in, in that race, but everyone, we sat down and they made the right decision. He needed another run. Uh, he's a gelding, he's laid back. 2-2, two, 2-4, two, two, that's his game. Uh, I mean, he ran in the Gold Cup last year, to give you an idea. So, 1800, he's not 18, not any day of the week, especially a slow run race. So, Mark could have gone to the front, 
uh, and maybe heightened up the speed, but then that changes everything for the, the Vodacom Durban July. All of a sudden we've got a horse that, that wants to chase to the front and uh, it's not ideal. So we ran, I thought we ran to form, we ran a great race, very happy, you ran fourth, beaten a length and a half or something. Plus in that race, those jocks were very clever. They came into the straight and they ducked down the inside fence and they were gone. We were coming down the outside, but which you can normally get there, but with a tailwind, a howling, I mean, I've never seen Durban wind like that. It was crazy, it was a howling, howling tailwind and a slow run race, we just couldn't get there. But add another 400 meters and, a, and no wind, it's game on. Magnificent Seven down the inside. Grade two Cape Stayers winner, Magnificent Seven gets on well with Luke Ferraris, as we saw in the Gravel 1900. It's wonderful for a young jockey like Luke Ferraris to have a ride in the Vodacom Durban July. Yes, look, he's, uh, he deserves it. He's a good kid and he's a horse that is on the up he really never lets us down and uh, also with 53 kilos on his back he needs to every bit of the 2-2. His run in the Gravel 1900 was phenomenal. To come back from a, a long layoff into a 1900 uh, was something quite impressive and uh, as I said uh, he's also one of the dark horses of the race. The race to the Vodacom Durban July certainly doesn't end here. Baharin raced himself into contention with a win in the Grade 3 Jubilee Handicap at Turfentine last weekend. Barahin, infamous Fox, Barahin running on his shenanigans, Barahin in front and Barahin will win the Jubilee. Barahin has beaten shenanigans. Third I mean, he doesn't know what to do this horse. So he's obviously still improving and uh, he's going to be a massive runner in the Vodacom Durban July this year. Oh, you'll have to speak to Matt about that, you know, but I wouldn't necessarily say right now, but I mean, you know, a couple of months down the line, I did say the same with a Wom, but a Wom knows what to do, you know. Um, a Wom just doesn't do it. He's not, not the most tractable. This was he's just unconscious, you know. And I think he's got a very bright future ahead of him. Just how good was that win and what is still to come? As Anton described him as unconscious in the course of running. Is there a lot more still to look forward to? Yeah, sure. I mean, if you look at his record, he hasn't been uh, raced hard. I can't say I've ever had him at a, like a super peak. He's getting there now if he can have a trouble-free um, uh, prep into the July. I mean, it's not ideal. I'd love to have had another run under the belt, but it is what it is. Um, but he's a, he is a very, very good horse. You know, he ran second to a warm, albeit well beaten, but he wasn't even close to, you know, absolute peak that, that a warm. He wasn't in the same form that a warm was in. So he's got to be a runner where he is at the weights and, uh, you know, obviously needs a bit of luck in running. He is a type of horse that switches off early, so he's going to be, he's almost one dimensional and he's going to have to be given a chance, a chance and then, and then kick. So he's a horse that's going to have to have pace. So, you know, he is, but he is uh, he's a very good horse. Does he also underline the strength of the three-year-olds in the country? Of course he does. Um, I think his win last time shows that, albeit, uh, you know, it was at group three level. But um, uh, I think we have got quite a good crop of three-year-olds around this year. Speaking of which, the multiple group winning filly return flight has a legion of followers. Sean, she's excited fans with her consistently high level performances in graded races. But was she perhaps caught out by the early pace in her last run, the Wollavington? Well, uh, you know, something was definitely amiss in that race. Uh, I can't pinpoint it. She was crossed at, at a crucial stage in the race uh, by the second horse quite severely and had to check. She lost her shoe. Um, so that could have accounted for the slightly disappointing run. And, and the fact that the two other Joba horses that she had beaten previously and in front of her, I'm pretty confident that was a below par uh, effort. I'm happy to put a, a, a line through it. She's doing very well and yeah she'll, she'll take her place. Sean you're well known for your success on the track with some of your older horses. How are both Tilbury Fort and Legal Eagle working at home? Legal Eagle's I think doing very well. Obviously his 2000 meter run was, was excellent from a bad goal he ran on really strongly and on, unfortunately even though I anticipated a very strong pace for the prep run things didn't map out and the horses had were supposed to be up there, didn't do what they were supposed to do. And it became an ordinary race and obviously to out sprint them in the winter going is not it's not as easy as coming from off them in the summer game when they're going hard and he's running fresh. So yeah, we had to just uh, put a line through his prep run. It wasn't what I wanted, but he's come through it well. Tilbury he tried a, a different nose band um, in the two thousand 
to work for him. So he's 2,000 meter run was a little disappointing, but he's prep run in the 14 same race, a very slow run race. You know, it's hard for these horses staying top horses from the back of the field in a slow run race. And he's in a good space, doing well. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with where they are at the moment. Will you gallop them at Reinke's Fontaine on the 27th? The arrangement will probably be the 26th at, at Reinke's Fontaine, as all my horses will be riding in for the July. I think it definitely is one of the, the strongest races we have seen in a while. We've really got exciting horses. I mean, the top three horses in the country are probably in the race. I, I think it's the strongest renewal we've had for a while. But uh, fortunately, it, it is a handicap. Yeah. You know, it does you know, level it up a bit.